Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Zwelder. Turning your Bibles today to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. Now it goes on to say, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. But we want to concentrate on the first four verses because Peter tells us, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Now the mind that Christ had was a mind to do the will of God. Verse 2 says, but to the will of God. And the mind that Christ has is a, is a mind that said, in doing the will of God, I'm going to suffer in the flesh. And he did. And, uh, and then he says here, and he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Now Jesus never sinned. But the point is, when you... When you, in Jesus Christ, have suffered in the flesh, you'll cease from sin. So, what we want to look at today is we want to look at being armed. Arm yourselves, is what he said. Arm yourselves. Now, Christ suffered in the flesh for sin to free us from sin. And as he did that, so we have suffered in the, suffered in the flesh to, have ceased to cease from sin in him. Christ was minded to do the will of God in his life. He said, I do always those things that please him. So you and I likewise need to do the will of God in our lives, and we need to arm ourselves. So today what we're going to do is talk about that, arming ourselves with the, with the same mind that Christ had. And when we talk about it, we first of all will say this, arm yourselves in the will of God. Peter says here that, be, that, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. Watch it, but to the will of God. God has a will for your life. And after you get saved, you need to be armed with a mind to do that will. Now, there's several things to say about the will of God. First of all, there is the disclosed or revealed will of God that you find in the Bible. I mean, all you have to do is get your concordance and look up will of God, and there they are. They just pop right out of the page to you. They can't, you can't miss them. For instance, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, the will of God is also stated that you abstain from forn fornication. It's uh, the sanctification of the Lord uh, is his will. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. And you'll find a handful of verses like that in the Bible. All right, so those, those are the common will of God. They're stated for all Christians. But then, then God has a will or a plan for your life after you get saved, and you need to be armed with a mind to do that will, to do what God wants. Now, that's very important because you, you've got to, depending on whether you're older or younger, you, you've really got to search your own heart and find what it is in your life that pulls your strings. I'm thinking of like those marionette puppets where they were all attached, you know, by strings. And so there was a, a usually a wooden contraption that was held in the hand of the uh, puppeteer. And the strings were attached to the head and to the legs and to the feet. Uh, to the uh, to the arms and you know they could move the, that cross around and then the puppet would would have motion all right well likewise that it's like you have strings attached to you 
for all types of strings. So things and blow strings and make you move around, do things. For instance, uh, a husband and wife get married and somehow or another mother-in-law becomes a real problem because she can pull her daughter's string or we sometimes say push her button. Okay. It could happen to a man. Sometimes a couple gets married and the boss has more control over the young man's life than the Lord does. Um, it could be that money or fame or husband and uh, husband. wife get married really pulls on the heartstring. And, and then what happens is you've got this person and you're thinking, now, wait a minute. You know, this I, I can't read this person because under normal circumstances, he does like this. But every once in a while, he does like that. What that is, is somebody that's wishy-washy, double-minded, pulled in two different directions, whatever you may say, serving two masters, whatever the, whatever you may say. And so you've got to know yourself well enough to know what it is that's pulling on you. Some people are under the control of alcohol. Some people are under the control of drugs. Whatever the case may be, we'll get into more of that. The point is, when you get saved, you have to understand that God has a will, God has a plan for your life, and you need to be armed with a mind to do His will. You relinquish, you surrender, you give up. Not my will, your will. Now, people have said, well, I'm, I want to know the will of God for my life, and they, they wrestle with all that. Let me, let me just say this. You find God's will in the step-by-step -step process of following Him daily. In other words, every morning when you get up, just like Jesus did, Isaiah chapter 50 tells us that when Jesus got up, uh, he, His ear was obedient. The Bible says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. So He said, I I know how to speak a word in season because in the morning the Lord speaks to me. Isaiah 50 verse 4. All right, so that's what you need to do. Every morning you need to get up and you, you have that time of devotion, that prayer time, that Bible reading time. And, and, and you get your mind uh, under and armed with the will of God. And then what happens is you begin your day. And, and in that day what you're trying to do is you're just trying to place every step right in line with God's will for your life, just step by step. So prayer, Bible reading, attendance to good preaching, uh, attendance to good teaching are going to help you. You're listening to this radio broadcast. Perhaps you're a regular listener and you listen so that God can give you things to help you in your life. We, we will never be able to replace what God does for you. We'll never be able to replace your own Bible reading and Bible teaching, but often God uses what we say from the Scripture to help you with that step that you're to take today. So God keeps you in His will and directs you through the maze of enemies who try to pull you away from His will. And so you have to arm yourself with a mind to do God's will. Listen, if you don't make up your mind every day, I'm going to seek to do the will of God in my life, you're easily going to be pulled in another direction because you're not going to think, okay, God has a will. I've got to do that will today. So first of all, you arm yourselves in the will of God. And then secondly, you arm yourselves against the will of the flesh. In other words, in the will of God and against the will of the flesh, because you understand that your flesh has a will, has a, de has a desire. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 2, he says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men. So your, your flesh has a desire. There's sin working in your flesh constantly trying to, to keep you out of the will of God, but, but mainly to fulfill itself in your flesh. Now, before salvation, you just did whatever came naturally. You did whatever you wanted to do. You did whatever you thought was right. That's like it was back in the book of Judges. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I mean, you just just followed the flesh, your flesh, whatever came naturally, whatever you wanted to do, whatever you thought was right. You followed your own opinions and 
Oh, perhaps, perhaps that you were, you know, one of those persons that was minded uh, by other things like mom and dad and so forth. But, but basically, basically, you were the servant of sin. Whenever sin wanted to do something, you pretty much obeyed what sin wanted to do in your life. But now listen, listen, now that you are saved, now that you are saved, okay, you are the servant of God Almighty. And it doesn't matter what the flesh wants. Paul says, I keep my flesh in subjection. I keep my body in subjection. It doesn't make any difference what your flesh likes. Oh, I like this, and I like that, and I want this, and I want that. Listen, you're, you're spoiled. You have to arm yourself in the will of God, and you have to arm yourself against the will of your flesh. You yield to God, and you do His will. Let me show you here in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, just a fabulous chapter of Scripture. I guess I keep coming back to it from subjection. It's just so good, and we constantly need to be reminded what it says. Romans chapter 6, look at verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Now that's, you, that's a, a, a command, and you have to arm yourself against, against not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now people have all kinds of clever ways dealing with sin. They, they don't want to call whatever it is that's going on in their life sin, and that way they can continue to do it. But if it's, I keep coming, I keep coming. and defined in the Bible, and if it's sin, then you're not to let that sin reign in your mortal body. You are not to obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield not sin, therefore, sin, therefore, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You're not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered, delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Now you've got to understand that. I am the servant of righteousness, you need to tell yourself, and my flesh still has sin in it, according to Romans chapter 7, and it has a desire, and it wants to do things, and I've got a rule over it, and I'm going to do that in the will of God. So I yield to God and do His will, and then when the flesh raises up and it has a will that is contrary to God's will, you, you cannot give in. You cannot give in. Listen, you cannot continue to live still sin in, in, in the flesh to the lust of men. I've got friends of mine that are dead now, and, and in their flesh they had a lust for cigarettes. They just did. I mean, and, and you know, we were in we were in Guatemala recently, and and boy, there this, there's no such thing as a Surgeon General's warning that's that is um, ambiguous. We walk through the airport, and there's a big old car, uh, carton of cigarettes, and right there it says, smoking kills. All right, listen, we know that. We understand that. You understand that. Even if you're having trouble with cigarettes, you know that. These, these folks that are dead now know, knew that. Both of them died from cancer or complications of the lungs related to cigarettes. Both of them. He said, well, what was going on? Well, it's very simple. Their flesh had a will. And that will was to do something that was contrary to God's will. They knew that it was wrong according to God's will to smoke. They knew it. They kept coming to me and saying, you know, pray God will deliver me from this sin and all that stuff. And I tell them, you know, God's not going to deliver you from that. There are some people who get delivered from it. Now, if you were one of those, thank God that you did. But I tell a lot of people, listen. God didn't give them to you, so he's not going to take them away from you. You put them down, and he'll give you the grace to, to live without the urgency to smoke or get will with will. something that's contrary to desire. That's God's will. Well, they violated that will, and, they're, you know, and they lived the rest of their time in the flesh to the lust of that, of that, um, of that sin. Listen, arm yourselves in the will of God. 
against the will of the flesh. Secondly, 1 Peter chapter 4, arm yourself in the will of God against the will of the Gentiles. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 4 and look at verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. There it is, the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Okay, now you may be asking yourself the question, well, what is lasciviousness? I'm glad you ask. If you'll listen to Monday's broadcast that we have posted on the website, you will have a very thorough definition. Lust, excess of wine, you understand what that is. Revelings, it's like a, you know, a big party. Banquetings, abominable idolatries. All that stuff. Okay, now notice what he says here. This world offers all kinds of things that appeal to your flesh. And society always tries to eliminate any restraint to those things it calls fun. So consequently, the pleasures of sin run wild in the world, offering people whatever your choice of sin. Now, of course, the world doesn't call it sin, but God does. And I'm going to tell you something. When you do God's will, you cannot do the will of the Gentiles in the world because they are contrary. That is, God's will and the will of the Gentiles are contrary. Contrary. Now, you say, well, what about that will of the Gentiles? Okay, you're going to find that publicly displayed on the Internet. You're going to find it publicly displayed in movie theaters, magazines, books, newspapers, all ca whatever kind of device there is to communicate the will of the Gentiles to you. Basically, the will of the Gentiles is just to simply keep you so distracted you don't have time to do the will of God. We, we have here a thing we call Fishers of Men, and we go out uh, routinely to distribute Bibles in neighborhoods. And I realize that people are already bombarded at home by Jehovah's Witnesses knocking on the doors and telemarketers calling on the telephones. They just don't want their privacy disturbed. And I completely understand that. Uh, the Gentiles. Too is disturbed. But, you know, we're, we're not selling anything. We're not uh, uh, engaging people in lengthy conversations. None of that. We simply have a New Testament with some discipleship lessons in it. The New Testament is marked so you can find your way through it to the verses that are principal concerning salvation in Jesus Christ. There's an encouraging note in there and a tract with a message from us to help you get saved. We give those out. And I mean, people come to the door and, and they put on that face that just says, you know, tell me your business. Let's do whatever and be gone. And, you know, and through all that, we get some Bibles distributed. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking at those faces, and I realize I realize they're trying to put the look of intimidation on. Get your business stated. Get out of here. I, I understand all that. I, I know what the face looks like. I've seen it in the mirror, okay? And a track to help you face is simply the will of the Gentiles. They're tied into their television show. They're tied into their whatever they're watching at the time. Uh, they're tied into their work. They're tied into their... Their family responsibilities and duties, they're tied into their recreation. And, man, they just ain't got time for God's will. That's exactly how the Lord uh, is, is uh, picturing it. And that's exactly how the world wants it so that you don't have time to do God's will. Now, I'll tell you something. If you waste a bunch of time surfing around on the Internet and, and you're tied in tight to flesh book and you just, you know, don't have time to read your Bible and find out God's will and all that other stuff. You know what? You are you are too steeped into the idolatry of this world. People say, I just don't have time. Well, you got 15 hours a week to watch television. Well, I got to watch the news. I'm going to tell you, there's more news in the Bible than there is on the television. You're a fool to listen to that stuff repeated and think you're going to learn more about whatever's going on than you will by reading the Bible. I guarantee you, your time... Yeah that you're going to learn more about what's going on around you today by looking in this Bible than you ever will by listening to the nightly news. Now, if you can listen to the nightly news and do God's will and, and, and stay in God's will and not follow the will of the Gentiles, okay, God bless you. Do that. All right. You know, keep a balanced life. I don't have any problem with that. But listen, huh, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's still going on in your life that has nothing to do with the will of God. And the Bible says that is supposed to be in the time past of our life in verse 3.
Some old Christians are still hanging out in bars. Christians are still hanging out doing things uh, that Gentiles do that that God wouldn't approve of. And you know how I know you know that God wouldn't approve of it. You wouldn't dare mention what you're doing to anybody at church unless you're in such a liberal church that they don't care. That's right. All right, so arm yourselves in the will of God against the will of the flesh, against the will of the Gentiles, and then this, arm yourselves in the will of God against the will of your friends. Verse 4 goes on to say in 1 Peter chapter 4, wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They say bad things about you to pressure you to go with them and not with God. That's what we call peer pressure, and it works. Listen, if you are armed in your mind to do the will of God, you will refuse their pressure and respond to God's leadership in your life instead. Because it really doesn't matter what they think. It really doesn't. Now, you know what you have? You have friends that know you go to church on Sunday. And why is it they call you on Saturday and say, hey, we're all going to the beach to go surfing on Sunday. You want to go with us? Hey, we're going to the deer lease this weekend and we're going to be gone Saturday and Sunday. You want to go with us? Hey, we're dot, 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 fill it in. And how is it that it always seems to compete with the very thing you know God wants you to do? You make up your mind during the week, reading your Bible. This, this happens a lot with husbands and wives. Here you are, a wife, you're saved, you love God, you make up your mind. Okay, Friday, it's, it's discussed at supper. You and your husband say, yeah, we're going to church on Sunday. Somehow or another, between Friday night and Saturday night, something has happened. It involves your friends, and now your husband's saying, well, I don't know if I want to go to there or not. I, we, we got an opportunity to go and meet up with them. Cowboys are playing at 12, blah, blah, blah. We ain't got time to go to church today. They're going to do a little barbecue ahead of time. We need to be there. How did that happen? Well, what happened is the, your friends put pressure on the weaker of the two of you, and now, now there is discord. Uh, I've said Saturday, between Saturday Friday night tonight. How many times people have said, you know, Sunday, I'll be here next Sunday, preacher. And all of a sudden something comes up and they tell you later, well, we had this friend of ours that said something about San Antonio and we had to go up there and blah, blah, blah. All that is, is you did not arm yourself in the will of God against the will of your friends. And you got roped in, suckered in. You're like a little puppet there. Somebody pulled your string. People say, man up. I'm going to tell you something. It is hard to man up against peer pressure. Okay? That's, that, it is real. It works. You're not going to just say, man up, and somehow or another you're going to be able to turn down those invitations time and time again. It doesn't work like that. You have to arm yourself in the will of God. You've got to remember that God has a plan for your life. It is an unusual thing when we have special meetings how people get drug out from those special meetings. And it's at those special meetings when God has something very specific for the very person who needed to hear that thing. And they're not there. Where are they? Wherever their friends said, it's time to be here. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ died in the flesh at the hand of the Gentiles after he was betrayed by his friend. He called Judas Iscariot friend in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Judas Iscariot is the one that betrayed him. It's the Gentiles that, that uh, crucified him. Listen, Gentiles, friends, your flesh are just as ready to take you down as they took Jesus down. And the, listen, the Lord Christ died at the, the hand of the Gentiles. The Gentiles. After he pray will only. By his friend. He called Jesus, Jesus free will, but thine be done. I guess so. And scared as good as Jesus scared him. The one that it's, the it's the Gentiles that, that uh, to, uh, crucified him. Listen, you're going to be judged. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? You're going to be judged. And do you think that you're going to be able to offer to God and the Lord? Listen, excuse. Well, my flesh just... What, I just, you know, I started smoking when I was 12, and, and I, got, I didn't get saved until I was 25, and so, you know, it, it was just real hard for me. Yes, yes, Excuse at your judgment? I don't think so. That, 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 not when his son suffered in the flesh so that you could cease from sin. That's a lame excuse. 
well, I got strung out on drugs, you know, and I'm not doing the same hard stuff that I used to do, but I got to do a little something, you know, now and then because things at work are awful stressful. You are such a cop out. You're not armed in your mind with the will of God. You don't realize the great price that Jesus Christ Christ paid in his flesh to suffer in the flesh for your sins so that you could cease from sin. You, what you've done is you've compromised. You said, well, I'm not, I don't have to do all the will of God in my life. I just, just get by and do a little bit. If I go to church from time to time, put a little money in the plate, they'll let me go. Because I got things that the Gentiles do that don't involve church. That stuff's supposed to be in the past of your life. You think you're going to stand up there at the judgment before God and say, well, I don't know. You know, I, 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 yeah, I'd have been more faithful to do your will, but, you know, I mean, I mean, after all, we were living down there in the world, you know, there are a lot of things going on. We had things to do. You think God's going to buy that at the judgment after his son suffered in the flesh so that you could cease from that Gentile worldly attitude? Listen, the devil is the God of this world. How are you going to explain that to God at your judgment that the will of the Gentiles was more important than the will of God? How, how, I, 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 want to sit there, I, I want to sit there and watch you explain to God Almighty, yeah, well, you know, what those boys wanted me to do, well, uh, Lord, that, that stuff down there in the world, we all had to make a living. I mean, bless God, I, I didn't have time to go down there. I want to see you explain to God how the will of the Gentiles was more important than the will of God. Yeah, and you, your friends, some of your friends, you ought to be witnessing to your friends, try to beat them, bring them to Jesus Christ. But you know when you open your mouth about Jesus Christ, they're going to run like a hit dog. Well, then you know what that means? Your friends aren't going to be up there with you when you're being judged by God. And how are you going to explain that those fellows that are now on their way to hell because you wouldn't witness to them are the reason that you wouldn't do what God wanted you to do? That is lame. That's sorry. That's sorry. You need to arm yourself with the same mind that Christ had in the will of God and say, listen, this is going to be the priority in my life. I'm going to do what you want, not what the flesh wants, what, not what the world wants, not what my friends want. And now you'll be able to talk to God about that at your judgment. And I hope that you can. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com That's my, the number three, bc.com If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, Come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Hallelujah.